This is Conversations on Careers and Professional Life, a podcast from the Foster School of Business, MBA Career Management Office. I'm your host, Gregory Heller. On each episode, I talk with guests from faculty and staff to students and business leaders about the skills and strategies that can help you design a professional life that you're happy with. My guest on this episode is Peter Boyd. Peter is a lecturer at the Yale School of the Environment and Yale School of Management. I was introduced to Peter through a webinar called The Hunt, Charting the Path to Your Next Career Move, from the Yale Center for Business and the Environment, where Peter is a resident fellow. The webinar was filled with great advice for thinking about and preparing for a job search, and I knew I wanted to have him on the podcast to share with my listeners. Before his time at Yale, Peter was the launch director and COO of Sir Richard Branson's Carbon War Room, a veteran of Virgin Group, and a former McKinsey consultant. I wish we'd had more time to talk about these experiences, but in our conversation, we really focused on his advice for job seekers. We conducted the interview over the internet during the pandemic summer of 2020, so you may notice some differences in the sound quality of this episode. I hope you enjoy this conversation on careers and professional life with Peter Boyd. I am excited to have Peter on the show because I recently listened in on a webinar that he was delivering for the Yale Center for Business and the Environment called The Hunt. And I thought he had some great advice for job seekers, and I wanted to bring that advice to the listeners of my show. So Peter, welcome to Conversations on Careers and Professional Life. Thank you. Good to be here. Now, we had a little conversation just before this, um, and one of the things that we talked about that you went over is your 4P model that you use in The Hunt, which is a workshop that you deliver uh, at Yale and that you delivered in this webinar. Can you talk us through the four Ps of The Hunt? Yeah, sure. And and, and actually, I suppose what I do is I apply a sort of a, a slightly larger or sort of broader connected leadership principles um, that I think apply well to the job hunt and, and, and the hunt for the next career move. And, and, and that's the, the sort of the piece you're referring to there. And um, so sort of, I suppose, call it connected leadership, if you will. But the idea is, is, is really based on a super simple logic flow of my nonlinear career of going across different um, in industries and sectors and countries. Um, I, I always sort of sort of fascinated about what makes great leaders tick and, and, and what makes them very effective. And, and really the s- simple logic flow is like, like really know why you're, he- why you're here and those around you are here. Yeah, like know what's important and be very clear in the destination and then drive your actions from those first two insights and get out on one page whenever you can. And that sort of simple but hard to do sort of logic flow sort of, g- sort of gave over time this, this idea of the four Ps. P, the first P, purpose. So questioning and confirming your purpose. Um, you know, sort of why, why are you here? Uh, you know, what, what are you here to contribute? Uh, priorities, working out what's really important, you know, clarifying, but also personalizing those, those, those things that are important to you. Uh, potential is third, uh, being quite vivid and, and, and creating a picture on what success looks like um, um, in the future. And then performance is connecting and, and it's almost like holding yourself and others to account on performing against that and, and, and sort of impactful leadership. I always think of those things as intertwining fibers of a rope um, so that it's not sort of one and done. You kind of, you put these things in isolation and only do them once. The idea is that you uh, are kind of consciously intentional about all four of these at the same time. And what advice do you have for job seekers who maybe haven't taken the time to step back and really think and interrogate what their purpose or their passion is? Um, so, so I, I think like, like it's, it's always worth doing because, um, two things at least come to mind from your question. One, one is like, you're more likely to be hunting on, on a place that's sort of less busy. If you've taken the time to work out, well, why am I here? What's my unique contribution? It's more likely to be almost by definition unique, um, and and so I think it helps job hunters because they're sort of hunting in in in, in sort of potentially sort of off the uh, slightly off the beaten path. Um, the the other piece that I think is really interesting about going back and and, and sort of to, to these pieces is that the stories and the sell um, are, are become more infectious and real. 
So when you're, whether you're networking to get the interview or whether you know, hustling on email or whatever you're doing to get there, um, you know, sort of knowing yourself, if you think of that as almost like the center of the onion, um, your stories are more infectious and, and, and more uh, compelling. And then your, you know, sort of your ability to sell those stories and to get into the right rooms is, is then more compelling. So I, I think it's sort of, it's both where you hunt, it influences that. And it also influ influences almost like the effectiveness and the, and the authenticity of, of, of your hunt. And we talked about Simon Sinek's Start With Why, and his colleagues have written a book, Find Your Why, which helps people kind of peel back those layers and get to that core to knowing yourself. At Foster, we use the Designing Your Life framework, which I mentioned to you. And part of that is coming up with what in the book they call your work view and your worldview. So like what is work for and what is life for? And we go through those exercises because it creates this opportunity for students to get clear about maybe what their North Star is or get to a point where they can discern whether an opportunity is right for them because they can compare it against those. And I hear a lot of that in what you're saying about the value of that first P of getting to your purpose. And you have some exercises that you use with students, a series of questions that I, that I liked. And when we were speaking, just tell me a little bit about how the, the progression of those six questions, we don't need to go through each of them in detail, but the progression and how that works with students. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I, I think it's almost like embedded in, in some of what you said and, 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 you know, sort of, I suppose my model and others is, is sometimes it gets people concerned. And I think we were talking about this, about this a little bit before as well as like, 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 but I don't know my why I don't know my North star. So I, I think where, where I try and go is try and kind of keep probing and, and igniting the curiosity in terms of, well, what do you think right now? Um, and what gets you going? And what's important to you and what's not and just like and, and, and sort of so so not necessarily having a, a sort of super high bar on like i have a, a sort of a crisp sentence on one why but just that idea of exploring and the progression to, to your question like, like i've got the sort of six questions that sort of build them to sort of a big a, hopefully a better understanding and an increased curiosity on on that why what makes people tick um but the first piece is the sort of your fork in the road like like like, like where are you now you chose to be at this fork most people are a fork in the road um like own that choice and then and um basically not only sort of why do you decide here own the decisions but also like own the the great things the things you've brought there then your horizons that's the second stage uh that, that i kind of try and take people through it's like lift your head up really high look far forward like what was like what's exciting about the the 10 year you um, and then, and then make sure your future sort of tries to build towards that and then go super short and go, if I only had a few months, what would I be, you know, like, what would I get, get done? And in the last section, I, I, I try and tap into, uh, on the, in these pieces is like, what is in your inner engine? What can you not help being? Um, you're like, when are you in flow? When you, when, you know, what activities forget, forget to eat and drink? Like you just, you're just on fire and get people to think about that in slightly different ways. So sort of unearthing those, you get some, normally get some really good words that then sort of can pull into the sort of later parts of the of the of the hunt process but also are words that you'll be naturally again gone by the word of sort of positively infectious with when you're talking to people about what gets you excited i love the idea of flow we use the clifton strengths from gallup assessment to help people understand those things that they're naturally good at that they naturally sort of time melts away. And it's also a part of the uh, design thinking process in designing your life is to understand those things that give you that energy and give you that experience. So I love that that comes in here as a consideration. And I love the question you have in under the horizons, the why are you excited about where you could be in 10 years? I love the way that question is phrased because it doesn't say you know, looking back 10 years from now, what will you have done with your life, right? Or where do you see yourself in 10 years? It gets at this, what will you be excited about where you are? Like, which anchors back to this idea of passion and I think pulls forward into that question of flow. Yes, and it also pulls, I, I mean, I, I agree, like I've like, 
I have enjoyed kind of continually crafting these questions over the years with like, you know, sort of feedback from sort of one-on-ones and one-on teams and then workshops like this. But yeah, the, the, the bit I'm also trying to get to there is like, don't be sort of almost like holding yourself to such a high bar that you sort of have to know where you're going to be in 10 years. But, but, but what, what emotions are you feeling? Uh, and, yeah. and, and, and what, um, you know, sort of what, what excites you about the 10 year old or you? Um, that, that, that piece, I think people can get their heads around and can talk about, well, I'll be working at the intersection of X and Y, or I'll be feeling this because I will, you know, sort of, you know, be happy about where I've got my balance in life or whatever it is. And they can be as vague or as specific as, as what comes to that person, but there's powerful words normally in the answer. If we think about the hunt, given where we are today, it's the summer of 2020, we're in the midst of a global pandemic. The economy is in a tatters. It's really bifurcated. There's two economies. The job market is hot in certain realms. In other realms, we're really seeing depths we haven't seen in our lifetimes. What do you think is most important for job seekers to take away from your process in an environment like this? Yeah, it's, it, it, uh, you're right. It's such an unusual uh, time. Um I think, um, and I was just chatting to a student just earlier today about this this very point about like 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 you know, sort of how do you get hold of these people in these times? I think the the, the the one piece is 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 like it's it's more critical than ever. I think to be clear, and um, we talk we talk about in the workshop about like what makes an opportunity you're hunting for great? Like, like, what are you really interested in? This is the two shapes, the two triangles. Two triangles. Yes, exactly. The two triangles. So, so for those that uh, haven't seen it, sort of visualize two triangles and like, like the left-hand one is, is, the, or the first one is like, wh- what makes this opportunity exciting that I'm chasing? And if I had one sentence, that would be the tip of the triangle. And I'd say, I'm looking for this thing. Um, and if pressed, or you have a few more seconds, you'd say, well, that's really made up of A, B, C, and D, or I want to work at the intersection of A, B, and C. And then if you have more time, you then have, here's the three stories why A is really true, and I'm really excited about that, and here's some stories about B. But the idea is that you don't get lost in the detail of some albeit compelling story to you. You can kind of almost like navigate uh, your conversation with anyone and your pitch with anyone about like, this is what I'm hunting for and this is what makes me excited. And then the second triangle, which you've got to be equally focused on, I think, and even more so in these kind of pandemic times, is like, what about me should be exciting to you, whoever you are? And again, like if I had one sentence, I think I'm a, you know, kind of interesting and perfect combination of A, B, and C. And then if you want some stories, I've got some great stories about bringing A to life, bringing B to life, and bringing C to life. But again, I'm not getting... Um, getting stuck in my own stories and in my own narrative, unless of course you ask me about that, and 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 so the idea of those triangles sitting there as a like, navigation, and that your pitch can be like a two sentence pitch, um, one of each, or it can be a three sentence pitch, but but like being super short and getting into people's attention. I think everyone in COVID feels like, and I talk about, like outside Yale, I, I I talk to sort of you know I consult with top teams. It's like there's this ubiquitous feeling of working harder for less. Um, and lots of people are working a lot harder to get slightly less done or a lot less done. Um, and so so the hunt is no exception. It's almost like get you getting used to that and going like, I'm going to have to work harder to get into slightly less people's calendars or uh, like, like I'm going to have to work harder to get into that person's um, sort of sort of attention. Um, and, 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 and so get, getting in with that sharp pitch. Um, and then also sort of almost like, uh, uh, sort of not losing hope and not taking it personally. I think that's the other piece I really wanted to get across when you get to almost like to the tactics away, like if you start from the purpose and the strategy to the tactics, so like, is is just like, these people are not getting hold of you uh, or not responding because they're busy um, because you've gone below the fold. Like, like don't, don't take it personally that, that, you know, they read your CV carefully and decided it wasn't for them or they, they, they felt you weren't worth it. They just, they probably missed it. And so, and so kind of keep thinking like, how do I get to the top of the inbox? How do I not give up? Um, classic old quote, like, you know, there's no traffic jam on the extra mile. Is this like, like, can I keep trying and get into that? And, and then once you do that, the other interesting thing about the COVID times is actually, and I've heard this from both sales associates trying to get leads and also job hunters, you know, sort of with their, with their, with their careers is like, once you get in and you've got the, you've got the initial attention, actually it's probably easier than before 
to get that 15 to 30 minutes of the of the kind of the chat and the interview and the lead the informal interview like the, 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 because you know people are switching from zoom to to zoom or or, or you know skype call to, to microsoft teams etc and and the, the the transaction cost of of fitting you in for 10 to 15 minutes um, is actually you know, sort of uh, on one of the lowest it's been so again don't give up hope that's the other piece here is this like keep at it and and sort of and keep hunting and but hunt on in a unique way. There are two things that I want to come back to there. Uh, one is that second triangle. It's like, what is your value proposition for this opportunity? And I think that that is such a critical thing for people to know how they articulate what they bring to this company and this opportunity. And sometimes people don't uh, spend that time, maybe because their their hunt hasn't been focused enough, or um, they haven't. Uh, really thought about their particular skills and this particular role, like what makes them singularly perfect for it. So I really like that. The other is this idea that now it might be harder to penetrate someone's calendar, but once you're there, it's actually easier for them to spend time with you. Just like us having this conversation, you're in Connecticut, I'm in Seattle, we got it on the calendar a week ago, we're having the conversation, we're recording it. You know, I think that that's a great thing to remember. And actually, the third thing has to do with the taking it personally. You know, we have this negativity bias. If something goes wrong, you know, it's six times more powerful than something going right. And we always assume the worst. And to take that step back and reframe like you just did that, well, they didn't see my email. It's not that they saw my email, read my resume, and don't want to talk to me. It's more than likely that they didn't read the email, didn't see the resume, and I should try again. Yeah, yeah. And just to just to double in on that, um, uh, sort of, uh, uh, emphasize a couple of things there, because I think sort of good, great sort of builds. One is... The right hand triangle is this like you can, you, you, like, as in what's exciting about me to you? I, I think it's worth thinking through like the generic one. Like, what am I genuinely proud of? What have I learned? What, what have I got to give the world? And for those that are shyer and like, I, you know, brought, brought up in Scotland and not many of us maybe listening to this are brought up in Manhattan where it becomes naturally to you. I always say like, sort of bring out the, the New Yorker in you and, and sort of be proud of those things that you've got to bring the world, you know, like, like let your light shine and have a, almost like, but have a generic version of it. As in, I think I bring a combination of I don't know being Scottish and Yale and work to Virgin, whatever those th those th you know four or five things are. Um, but then, but then when you get down to the kind of the opportunity with the company, it's like now what? what how can I tailor this for the company? So have a generic version, but then have like once you've got that opportunity, like what is it about me that they might be interested in, and kind of go personal. Um, the other bit is just to kind of uh, on, on your second point was just to sort of bifurcate the piece between it's harder, I think, to get their attention, their initial attention, but it's easier to get the calendar once you've got their attention. Yes. I think that's that's the piece. And then the third piece, I, I, yeah, I, I totally agree on like, like don't take it personally. In fact, I'd, I'd go even further and say, like, I know plenty leaders. And I, when I was on the executive side, I was one of them. But but like I've, I've known people that are even more blatant about it is they actually wait for the first first couple of forwards. So they kind of go, if that person's just sending an email out, how do I know that they're not sending 20 of these out and I'm just one of 20 people? I want to see that they're forwarding this back to me a week later and they've found an interesting news article. Um, or they they forward it back up and they, and they and they've done it in a nice polite way that doesn't make me feel bad. Like the, the, there's there's plenty of senior execs out there. It's, it's better than not taking it personally. They they might be testing you, or, and, and they're not testing you because they want to be nasty. They're testing you because a they don't they genuinely don't have the time to to follow up on every single person that wants a 15 minute conversation, but also they're wanting to know who's the one that wants to jump highest. And it's and, and so so thinking of it reframing these things I think is helpful for for people as well especially those that are prone to think oh dear like I poured my life into that last email and nobody's responded therefore I'm the worst person in the world it's like no no it's my, the opposite might be true they just need that you know it's like they're testing you now go for it great advice uh, I feel like there's there's so much I could go into there but I I want to keep moving because there are a couple other things that uh really struck me from our earlier conversation and from your presentation that I'd like to to touch on. Can you talk about how you use the rocks pebbles sand uh metaphor? 
Yeah, yeah. So pas passionate about that one too. Um, um, so if you think about the, the going back to my sort of the, the sort of the four P's, the idea of like knowing why, you know, questioning it from your why. I use the rocks, pebbles, and sand analogy in the second P, the idea of like priorities, like well, what's important. Um, and 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 it was sort of popularized by Stephen Covey way back in the fifties. Um, it, it attributed to a story that you know sort of that, that predates him. But the idea, the very powerful piece is the sort of the jar, the jar of life or the jar of time. And you can choose when to put your rocks, pebbles, and sand in the jar. Put the rocks in first, the pebbles fit around the edges, and then the sand fits around the edges of the rocks and the pebbles. You fitted everything inside, but sand first, then pebbles, you potentially only have room for one or two rocks at maximum. So the key piece here is like knowing what's truly important, what those rocks are, naming them, being conscious about them, and then getting them in the jar first and making sure you spend time on them. Um, I think how, how I do it in sort of life courses and leadership courses and sort of, and, and, and sort of teams that want to sort of do this at a corporate level, you, you can obviously think about like, well, what are the corporate priorities and what should we be proud of spending our time on? And as a leader across my whole life, as a father, a husband and a community leader, as well as a CEO, like, like, like how do I piece all that together and get it on one page? That's one way I sort of, I use it. But, but, but the other piece with the job hunt, going back to the sort of the subject we've got here, is this like, you're like, what are the big things? Like the, those A, B, C, Ds, like what are the big things that I, like, I must have in my job that, that like, like, like to be fulfilling to me, but then for me to add value to, to, to society, is this like the, these things should be in there and can I name them? And can I name them in a way that is exciting to me, but also it's probably exciting to the person I'm talking to? as well. And that's really the kind of the piece that where I think is important here. So it's like, is it's like, yeah, knowing your rocks, and then and then and then sort of translating that into sort of that those next stages of potential, and then holding yourself to account, am I chasing a, a career that's got those things in it that I said were the most important things? I love it. There's so much that I could talk to you about, because there's a whole aspect of your career we haven't we haven't addressed, which is your time standing up the carbon war room. But related to that, I would ask for students who are interested in working in a career and a field where they can have a positive impact on the environment and the climate, what advice do you have to students pursuing that track? Um, well, let's see, where do we start? Well, the basic thing is, is this like, you know, like this, what's the, the African proverb, you know, sort of two best times to plant a tree 20 years ago and today. So yeah. don't, don't worry if you don't have, you know, sort of climate or renewable energy on your CV yet. And you feel like you're, you know, sort of quotes mid career. It's like, no, it's, it's never too late to start. I went, I went from CEO of a Virgin company to going in as the sort of yes, launch director, but also janitor and, you know, sort of everything else in between on, on the carbon war room, like the, like the sort of first employee in. And, and so I think I took sort of launch expertise and enthusiasm and some strategy and some things like that. So thinking about your transferable skills and don't be put off by, I don't have any experience. I typically, uh, on the tactics questions that we did in the hunt, for instance, that you were part of, is this like, I, I say like, almost like, don't get bogged down on almost like industry sector. Do I have direct experience? Is it a nonprofit or for-profit? They typically might be even the least important of the tactical questions. It's more like, like, like the tactical stuff, like what, what problems are you passionate about solving? Um, like those problems, for instance, could be core to the organization's mission or part of what they do. Here's a good example of, of uh, your point about, say, say these people you're talking about are pivoting into the environment or wanting to do climate change half, you know, sort of partway through their career. It's like you, you could, you don't have to go into a solar company, for instance, um, which is actively trying to replace the energy infrastructure with renewable. You could go into, let's take Patagonia, who wants to be, like the, the most progressive, least evil uh, end of the clothes, the, you know, the clothes industry or the apparel industry. So, so it's like their mission um, is not necessarily to sort of, you know, sort of stop the effects of climate change. Their core business is to, you know, sort of make, you know, great pieces of clothing, um, but they want to do it in a way like that their how is, 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 is helping to solve climate change. So that might be a way in for many people that, that, that are listening to this is to say like, oh, so, so like being on the sustainability team of a, of a sector that I'm already very familiar with, that's, that's a place to do it. So I, th I think that would be the thing. So I, don't, I, I think getting wedded to the idea of like, 
like like solving climate change means only one thing like you know sort of you know going from coal to solar it's like there's so many aspects of of becoming like a, a benevolent uh, force on this planet as a humanity um that there you know sort of there will be an intersect with your your transferable skills and passions I think that's great. I want to thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me today and to share your wisdom with my listeners. I hope we'll have the opportunity to have another conversation where we can go into some more depth about some of your other experiences. But thank you again for being on Conversations on Careers and Professional Life. A real pleasure, and I hope, I hope, hope it helps. Yeah, great. All the best to everybody listening. I hope you enjoyed my conversation with Peter Boyd. The three big takeaways for me from my conversation with Peter and from his webinar are that one, know what makes an opportunity great for you and what makes you great for an opportunity or company. He describes this in the two triangles framework. Two, don't get discouraged when people don't get back to you. They might just be testing you. I love that reframe. And three, really take the time to understand what excites you. Peter has some great resources in his presentation, as well as some downloadable worksheets. You can find a link in the show notes or on conversationsoncareers.com. Thank you for listening to another episode of Conversations on Careers and Professional Life. I'd love to hear what you think about the podcast. You can email me at gheller at uw.edu. And if you've enjoyed this episode, please share it with a friend or classmate.